When we become the sons of God, we are able to do all things through Him who dwells in the inside. The only way we find perfection in a man is looking at the side of Christ in them. The gospel is not just a mere message. The gospel that we preach is a person, the risen king. shall see our Lord. And it's not far from now. That's why this is a call unto you to turn back into the right path. Because the Bible says no one knows the day nor the time when our Lord shall appear. It's a chance. That's why we've come for service. It's a chance for us to turn back to the right path. Because when he comes, How will it be like? I don't know. But one thing we know, we shall see him by the riverside. We shall adore our God. I don't know what you believe to see, but one thing I know, that one day we are going to see our king, the one that gave up his crown for our shame. Baba Naziwa Mumusai Gwe Abangi Shiriba Chamani Suri Mbolu Imbalwa Musa Nolu Mwana Gwe Ndika Kuma Pari Komuka Ndivu Namane Sinza Yesu
Just close your eyes and imagine that day when God is going to separate his church. My God, that joy I feel in my heart where every man will be rewarded according to their works. This time it won't be judgment by faith. But every man shall be rewarded by what they did. <laughs> the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. He will give us rest because He is rest and we are in Him. Our crowns are reserved and protected and preserved by Him. We shall put them on. We shall walk on those golden streets. We shall witness the crowning of our heads with glories that no man has ever seen. But if you've sought after the glories of this world, there is no man with the glory of this world that can be able to be a partake of the glory of God. There is no man apart from our God. Come on, celebrate God for Jesus. Come on, you can do better. With a shout of praise, thank God for Jesus. We won't have a surety. We wouldn't. We wouldn't have a surety on that day. We wouldn't be bold. Let me tell you, we all have our shortcomings. But what will boost our confidence when the trumpet is blown? It's because we stood firm in Christ. No matter what, what, what the, I don't know when the trumpet will blow. I don't know what you will be doing. But no matter how wrong and bad it will be, your boast will be that you found your identity in the living king. And that will be your position. Celebrate God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, the wonderful melodies of God. God bless you. Yeah, take your position. Good boy. Where are you going? Come on, I, still you want me to tell you that please don't, don't leave an empty seat before. I won't say it. I won't. Sit where you want, but so long as there is no empty seat before you. I've not said that, move forward. But look at yourself being disobedient in the presence of God. Can you move to the empty seat that is before you, child of God? Why are you disobedient? Good boy and good girl. So as uh, we thank the Spirit of the Lord for what he's doing, I want to thank the Spirit of God for every one of us that is here. Come on, celebrate yourself that managed to be here. You can do better. You can do better. You can do better. Let us celebrate the prophet of God is in the house. Come on, come on, come on. Celebrate our very own Pastor Elijah is in the house. Let us celebrate the man of God. Come on. Above all, let us celebrate the Holy Ghost that is in this place. You can do better for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Welcome for me, your neighbor that is next to you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Welcome them. Give them a high five. If it's possible, give them a hug and tell them it is well. Come on, do it, do it, do it. Move around and find two people. Give them a hug and tell them it is well. Look for two people. Give them a hug and tell them it is well. Come on, come on, come on. They need it. They need it. They need it. They need it. It is well. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
So I want to thank the Spirit of the Lord for you and for me that he has made it possible for us to be in this place. Not many have the opportunity to sit and listen to this word that I'm going to release unto you. But the Spirit of the Lord has made it possible for me and you to listen at this opportune time because there is an alarm that is being set unto you. And I'm telling you, you will not regret being in this place today. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. I have a few announcements. Uh, every Tuesday we are here for fellowship and I want to encourage us. Continue to come. Make sure that devil should never deceive you, never to be in the congregation of the brethren. Whatever the devil will do, never allow yourself to be separated from gathering. If it takes reaching here when we are saying the grace, reach. Reach. And at least share the grace with the brethren. Go back and follow up the message. Never allow yourself to miss service. And as you're coming, it's also discipline and principle of kingdom to win souls unto God. So I commission you every now and then. But there is always a greater price of the obedient son or child in the house of the Lord. So I want to call upon each one of us to carry someone every Tuesday you're coming. Irrespective of how you look. Irrespective of how you feel unconfident of talking about your king. But it's not a shaming to talk about God. You all know what he has done for you. Sometimes I was talking to the ministers in the class on Friday. And I told them that sometimes you don't need to preach scriptures to people. You yourself, your written episode. Your story and what God has led you to overcome. It's enough to convert someone to Christianity. It's enough. Some of us, God has fought for us. And there is someone out there that is going through the same story that you went through. And all they need is not telling them how beautiful your God is. But telling them how powerful he was on your side. They need a testimony from you. And your testimony is our story as Torch Fellowship. And is it, as it is our story, so is it your story for you to be able to witness our God. Hallelujah. So make it a policy and make it yourself. Let it be a burden unto you to be able to carry the gospel outside and to other people. Our communities, we have Torch communities. Let us come early so that we carry value in communities or we are planning to get for us a day and it will be permanently for communities to come together maybe a weekend can work since we don't have sunday services we can have saturday evenings and then we have them for communities i believe that would work we are going to discuss it with a pastoral council and then we shall be able to announce next tuesday uh, i can't forget to tell you that we have two communities whoever was in fergus i kindly request you to join either force Oliknos, find where you will be able to feel peace. And I also want to tell you, as Fagos, as people reported that they were not fed, still if you're in force, Oliknos, and you're not being fed, you're not receiving a devotional every day, you're not having prayer altars, you are not being given something to watch, please and please communicate to us and let us save your soul from the person that is destroying and distracting you. Because we know that the devil cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. So that's the devil that is disturbing your community. So report and we work on it. I want to also to encourage all of us that are streaming from across the world. I want to thank the spirit of the Lord for you. Let us celebrate our online streamers and our international people. Come on, celebrate them. We want to thank the Spirit of the Lord for you. There are those of you that are watching online. Right now at this point, I want you to get your phone. Click on the share button and get that link and take it all over. I want to thank you so very much for those of you that keep on sharing our messages. May the Spirit of the Lord continue to bless you abundantly as we are doing this work together. You may not be able to hold a microphone like I do, but you're doing it very well when you're sharing that link. Continue to share the messages. Continue. Don't get tired. Even if they remove you from groups, even if they tell you, please stop sending, one day that person will land on that link. And their lives will never stay the same. And they will thank you forever. So continue to share the link. Continue. I've given you time. 
I'm not going to start to teach now. So share the link and come back to the glory of the Lord. And those of us that would love to gather outside Kampala, uh, sorry, outside Uganda, and you would love to fellowship with the brethren of Torch Fellowship, we have Light Campus Sudan. That is with Brother Nyeko. The number is already displayed on the screen. Copy it down, talk to Brother Nyeko, and be able to meet up with the apostle of God and they will be able to give you the directions and how you'll be able to gather with the brethren. Still, uh, we have Light Campus India. That is Brother Navin. Still meet Minister Navin. Talk to him and uh, the number is already on the screen. See how you can be able to join him. Even those of you that would love to open up Light Campuses where you are, we shall coach you, we shall teach you, we shall equip you and the Spirit of the Lord shall do you good. Still we have Light Campus Pakistan. All these ones are the Light Campus Pakistan. We are going to launch it in January. So I want you people to continue to fellowship with Minister David. Minister David will be in touch with you. The number is on your screen. Still not forgetting Kenya. Kenya, we are fellowshipping still there. And uh, if you want to be part of our fellowship in Kenya or Light Campus in Kenya, feel free to inbox or talk to the man of God, the Reverend Joseph Wafula, and talk to him. The number is also on the screen. And be part of the gathering of the brethren. It's important for your soul. It's important for your spirit to gather. You people don't know. Let me tell you something about the Matters Day. Men are walking from all over the world. People are walking from Kenya. People are walking from Congo. People are walking from Rwanda. People are walking from Tanzania coming to Uganda. I don't think religion can influence a man to that cause. I think they are just misled by religion. But if that knowledge lands on a man like you, and then you're able to walk, Hey, I'm telling you, one day I'm going to organize a service where we are all going to walk from our places to come and attend service. For you, if you will choose to get a border border, it's okay. You, you will get it. We have no problem with you. But those that will know the power of the instruction, they will witness. So I don't know what will make you that is around Kampala to miss service unless you have a demon spirit. That is refusing you. So light campuses, gather and inbox those people. If you want to open up a light campus, please inbox us. Then in uh, Kampala, Uganda, that is in West Nile, we are also in touch with uh, the prophet Israel and uh, we are seeing how to prepare a wonderful light campus in the, in the areas of West Nile. So very soon, very soon, before this year ends, we shall be in West Nile before Kalangala. Hallelujah. So, man of God, I believe now you're happy because I've confirmed that I'll be there to the glory of the Lord. Not forgetting on the 17th to the 23rd, those of you that are working, I request you, go write a letter requesting for, how do they call it? A leave. That week is going to be something. We are gathering 500 voices to speak unto the nation of Uganda. From the 17th to the 23rd, we are going to be here every evening from 4 to 8, starting from Monday 17th till 23rd. Then on the 19th of June, we shall have a powerful worship evening. Worship evening. If you've heard of worship, now I'm talking of worship. So, and in all these days, I want to encourage you, please, come when you've come to pray. If you're not in the mood of prayer, and if you're not in the mood of concentrating, and you're going to be moving up and down picking phone calls, please stay at home. Please. Don't come. We shall be streaming all over. On over 16 media platforms. So if you're going to be in all that, so you will be in the comfort of your home and no one will touch you. So don't bring your carnality here. I beseech you. If you don't want to press one way. And for the women, please, we know you like fashion and you like what, please. Make up what 
leave it. Come as a crazy woman that is ready to see God. So that as you're praying, you're not minding about the lipstick or lip gloss. Pa, 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 pa. Oh my God, it's going off. No, 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 no. Come when you're natural, so that when it is rabba, ba, 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 you, you won't mind about the lipstick. You won't mind about the nails. As you're praying, oh my God, how will I be able to nails? No, please, leave pedicure and manicure for the 17th to 23rd. Leave it. And I'm telling you, you're going to see something you've never seen that will turn in your life. Because if the atmosphere of Uganda is well, your atmosphere is well. Hallelujah. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend that we are here. The 500 people will come out of you. So by all means, they will be here. I know what I'm talking about. So that, by that way, we shall be having two places. We have the overflow outside and we have the inside. So if you would love to be in the inside, we will not be booking seats for anyone. So you will have to come early and get the seat inside. Oh, you'll be streaming from the screen outside. Then on Saturday and Sunday, we shall have it out. Praise the Lord. This is a matter of urgency. That's why it's communicated urgently. Hallelujah. So treat it as so. Not forgetting our dear men of God in Kalangala, on the 27th of July, we are having a minister's conference with the Kalangala ministers. And I want to call upon every minister in Kalangala, Come and let us see God. Come and let us see God. Come let us talk. Now we see Kalangala prosper in the gospel. Kalangala is one of the biggest portals that God has entrusted the world with. And it is full of straight power. I'm telling you. That's why even the evil world or the world of darkness loves that, that island more than never before. So if we don't get there, the devil is taking charge. So, men of God of Kalangala, we want to call upon you. Please, come and be part of this. When you see this video, maybe you've not yet been told. Maybe you've not been contacted by a friend. I have now contacted you. It's not by mistake that you're watching it. Continue and continue to be part of us and to support the kingdom. Not forgetting that South Sudan, tell your neighbor, South Sudan. Come on, tell it to somebody. Tell them it's lighting in South Sudan. Now from the 15th to the 17th of August, God is visiting South Sudan. And let me tell you people of South Sudan, you may not know what is coming to your land, but you will only understand it when we are there. Get for me everything that you know is a problem in that land. We are coming. We are coming with the man of God, Apostle Arnold. We are coming with the man of God, Pastor Asher from Kampala. And the entire Torch Pastoral Council. So it's going to be so powerful. We shall be having a conference with all men of God of Torrit. That is in the morning up to lunchtime. Then from after lunch up to evening... We are going to be meeting the entire people with a crusade. So I want to communicate this out of my heart. Mobilize for me every strange person. I'm talking of the crippled. I'm talking of those, oh, you know, those, those children that they give birth to and uh, they are, how is it? Baba Itaba Zolo. Uh, the South Sudans won't understand Zolo. Okay. Those people. You see, yeah, I have a drone syndrome. So bring those people with that effect. I, I, I want to see strange miracles. And I'm telling you, by the end of this teaching today, you're going to also be like me. We have seen the lame walk to an extent that it's normal. Don't you want to be there and you see somebody without a leg and you see it come out? Don't you think it will give God more glory? Don't you think? So people of South Sudan, get for me those people that are walking on the street without legs. Tell them the man is coming with your leg. Tell those ones without hands. Tell them this guy is coming with your hand. And I be a man of God of which I know. I am one. If they don't live with their legs, please don't allow me to exit Sudan. 
That's a guarantee. Get for me the dead. I've sought God like never before before. And these days I'm dangerous. Gone are the days where we were funny. These days I know myself. Let me give you a testimony. Word investment. Let me give you the testimony after the announcement. Because the testimony will be attached now to my teaching. Word investment. If you're not a word investor, I beseech you by the masses of God. Please register and be a word investor. If you're a word investor and you've not yet cleared, you may, you may investment. Please take on this week and clear your May investment. We are surely in need of your investment like never before. We have a lot of packed programs this year. A lot of packed a lot of packed. I've even forgotten about telling you the people of India that on the 25th, we shall be with you in New Delhi. So, I, I want to continue to tell you that we are surely so tight and we need your investment. So please, give us inspired of God. Those of you that don't know what word investment is, let me give you a highlight. This is where you get a certain portion of money and you're like, I'll be able to give my 20,000 every week, my 20,000 every month, or my 20,000 every year. And that is for the cause of the gospel. You give in your means and as inspired of the spirit. You may not know where the seed is, but the Bible says it's the one that gives the seed and bread unto, unto the sower, which means if you provide yourself as a sower, by all means it will provide seed unto you. It's not in your means to look for seed. He will provide it unto you. So if you sow and you are an investor, he will provide the investment. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, become a word investor. Those online, you can register with the numbers displayed on your screen. If you're blessed and you would love to give, our giving lines are displayed on your screen. You give through MTN and Airtel Merchant Code. The MTN Merchant Code is 56889. 56889. Eight, nine. Those that are just listening in and those that are watching, it's on your screen. Airtel Merchant is 6363233. 6363233. Two, double, three. All in the names of Torch Fellowship. If you're here, you can also use the merchant code. Oh, get out of your offering. Hold it. Let me bless it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you that you're good and your mercies endure forever. I thank you for those that are giving and bless them. Increase them, multiply them, glorify them to the glory of your name. Even those that don't have and would love to give. Father, increase and open doors for them that they may be the greatest givers the kingdom has ever seen. And all saints say, Amen. Let us bow our heads and pray and welcome the ministry of the word. Father, we thank you that the entrance of your word bringeth light. Father, it's my prayer that as we dig into your word, the eyes of understanding are opened. And we are elevated and we are being vindicated unto this word. Father, may we manifest that which we are being taught. And may your spirit be able to convict us to walk as us or as we have been educated in our identity of Christ. In Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. I got a phone call on Sunday. Yes, Sunday. Sunday was a very boring day. I don't know if it was also on your side, but it was one of the most boring that I've ever seen. So I was around and then I had to move to town, then had to go somewhere in one day, gear, then come back. So as I was on my way, I, I had taken a Buddha Buddha. So as I was on my way, going back home, I received a phone call from one of the sons. And... Uh, the niece, niece is the girl, eh? Eh? Yes. Oh, English, my Jesus. So the niece of a certain son of the ministry had uh, been taken to the hospital and uh, was in a coma on oxygen and uh, they had put on her over like 18. Are they called bottles or drips of water? Drips of water. And all these 18 drips of water that were being put on this lady, this girl could not come up. So the doctor said, we need blood. 
So the head swell, like it swell up. She was unconscious. And uh, when she got subconscious and she was like snooped out, she only made one statement. Call Apostle Davi. Only that. Then she went back. I came to the hospital immediately. I told my border guy to take me to the hospital. I reached there. And they were all like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I'm telling you how dangerous I am these days. I said, the girl is okay. Take off the oxygen. Hey, the mother looked at me and told me, a man of God, are you serious? I'm like, take off the oxygen. You see now, this hospital is an expensive one. Eh? I don't want to market hospitals. I won't mention the name. So uh, this time around, they didn't have these cylinders that are always in hospitals. Eh? There are something like sockets, eh? like this one. So they turn it off on. So they turned it off. And when they turned it off, they removed this pipe they put here. Told them, it's okay. That girl is fine. The man of God, you've not prayed. I've told you, she is fine. I called the girl by her name. She turned. I told her, turn again. This is a girl that had every bit of her in pain. I told the girl, are you okay? She told me, apostle, I'm okay. I told her, sit. Show mommy you're okay. She sat. I told her, get up. Show mommy you're okay. She got up. I told her, escort me. I go out. She escorted me. We moved out. I got my border guy. They went back. And I'm sure she's home enjoying life. <laughs> that is the place where God is calling the church to be. Not if phenosis are here, Simanya Sunosis, what? I told you, Ario Tericola. It is either rise up and walk or rise up and walk. Nothing like, Ate, now bring, bring now the, the, the logo, see? Ate, now, no, no, come on. He gets those that, that, that are mad. Mad people don't comprehend things. Zibate zigata. They can't. We should run mad. The moment you've not yet run mad, you are not going to see God. God is for the mad. That's why the things of the kingdom, the things of the spirit are foolishness. When I told them put off, I am sure the doctor that was outside was waiting vividly to, 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 to say, yeah, I must say. But I had this confidence in me that even if she would die, I would bring her back to life. That was my confidence because I didn't go to pray for the sick. I went to heal the sick. Sometime we just need to run crazy and, and, and get funny. But look at you. A simple flu. Kakati. Oh my God. Now, man of God, I won't come to me and you see. Flu. You run to Ibrahim Melody. Can you let me? He also can you let some posts. Ibra Melody, stop posting your things of treating people. Post people being healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me teach. I have a long message. You will allow me. I want to give you a good message today. Am I forgetting the title? It's called Functioning in Faith. Tell your neighbor, Functioning in Faith. Functioning in Faith. Um, I, I have something I want to tell you. And I want to be taken slowly. You see, there is something the Spirit of the Lord has awakened me these days to. And I want to awaken you people to that knowledge also. Do you realize that the more we want to know more, 
is the more we are running out of power. Do you realize? True knowledge and power cannot be separated. But in the realm of the spirit, the spirit of the Lord opened my understanding and showed me that knowledge and power can be separated in the spirit realm. In the physical, it's hard for man to understand that knowledge and power dwell in different capacities of operations. There is an operation where knowledge is exalted above power. There is also a place where power is exalted above knowledge. We know all these circumstances. There is a place where you will wake up, come here, and I will tell you, stand up. And by all means, you will stand up. That's power, not knowledge. Still, there is also a place where knowledge will be power. You can't get your power and take it to the state house that I'm here, please. Open for me. No, it's, now there knowledge will be your power. That you're going in peace, write and shed an appointment and get there. So how we balance the two determines how we run the race. But some of us have found ourselves sinking in faith. Because the revelation of knowledge has surpassed the working power of God that is in you by faith. True salvation is given unto us by faith through the knowledge of the gospel. But that does not take away the place of you receiving by faith. And then knowledge stimulates you to walk the journey. It's not knowledge at first. It is faith at first and then knowledge is applied later. Because once knowledge is applied at first, it's either going to turn into positivity or it might even turn into unfaithfulness. Do you know that if you read the Bible so much and you're very much equipped with knowledge, there is a possibility of you being robbed off of power. I gave you an example of the Pharisees last Tuesday and I showed you how the Pharisees knew too much. Knew too much. But right now, we have men that even know beyond the Pharisees. But these men cannot even stand and tell a lame guy to walk out of a wheelchair. This is how dead our generation has gone. Am I teaching good? We have a problem that needs to be diagnosed and worked upon immediately. We have a generation of boys that throw scriptures out of their lips like they are walking Bibles. You see the Bible says, you see the Bible says, I am a head, I'm not a tail. You see the Bible says, da, 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 da. but then at the end of it, ha, you see now, my account has been blocked. So uh, if, if you have anything, you see I'm very rich. You don't need to convince me how rich you are. Wealth is not pronounced. Wealth pronounces itself. When you find a rich guy, they, they won't need to tell you that they are rich. The moment your confession needs a backing up of an action or a verbal backing up, come on, come on, come on, come on. You're not manifesting. You are just dwelling in positivity. Why would you believe God? A God that says and gives us a blank check in John 14, 14 that whatsoever thing you will ask of me in my name that I will do for you. Why should we have such a God? And then we start to teach men. You see now he says he will do this for you but now there are principles that will accumulate this and this. No, the principle was just believe in my name, accept it, call unto it, and ask through it, and I'll give you. What makes complications is us who have drawn into knowledge so much that we feel everything is subtended to principles. Hey. The Bible says in Romans 4.17, 
that I have made thee a father of many nations. He says, before him who? He believed. He says, even God who quickened the dead. The Bible says, and calls the things that which be not as though they were. That scripture is trying to explain the power, the embodiment of God that is bestowed in the inside of your spirit, your body and flesh. When you understand what you carry, the God that you have made your God, you are given an identity as that of your God. That's why our t-shirts tell you and they remind you that your identity is finding yourself in Christ. Men that are believed as men of faith, as you're going to see in scripture and in history, they were not researchers. I, I, I want to re-echo this scripture again. When Daniel told us that knowledge shall be the stability of our time, it was not a positive scripture. It was a negative one. I want to repeat that again. The reason why the church is moving out of power, it's because we are knowing too much than we ought to know. Sometime all you need to know is that a lame guy can walk, not how. You, you don't need to explain how he walks. You don't need to know that. Sometimes you don't need to know how the dead rise. You don't need to get to that. But all you need to know is that when a dead man is called out by the power of the name of Jesus, that man can live again. Sometimes that's all you need to know when we get to faith. You don't need to research. Now the altar is supposed to be demanding. Now you, you place this. Sometimes behave like you know nothing. And all you know is that which has been revealed unto you. The Bible says the sacred things belong unto God. But only those that are revealed belong unto us and our children and our children's children. Which means anything that is not revealed unto us, it's not in our means to seek it out. Preacher of the word, am I communicating unto you? Men of God are now not reading the scripture because they are seeking out the revelation of God. They are reading scripture to seek out the depth of it. That when they read, Okay, Romans 4, 17. God, who quickens the dead? Who quickens the dead? Now, the, the, the Greek word that Paul used for quickening, ay, 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 it is translated as powering up their bodies. Okay, okay. And calls those things which be not as though they were masokopalate. They are not looking of the power which establishes things that are known as though they were, which means it does not establish them from the present. He establishes the things from the past. So they are now drawn on to that level of power that even this dead, actually, the thing of calling the things which be not as though they are or as though they were is not an independent. It's an explanation of the God that quickens the dead. In simple terms, the quickening of the dead is not happening at their death. It happened before they died. So he's raising them back. Because in the beginning, he called them to be alive. The one that is looking for depth and mystery will not understand this. Who told you that Peter knew anything? Who told you? Let us open the book of Acts. Chapter 3. We start with something beautiful. I'll, I'll just read only verse 6. The Bible says, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. He says, Give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. All that you should have in faith or in the world of faith is have Jesus 
Christ. Tell your neighbor, have Jesus Christ. Come on, tell it to someone else. Turn to another one. When you have Jesus Christ, you are able to do the impossibilities. Because with our Lord Jesus, everything is possible. Show me an impossibility. And I present my almighty God. He is able to turn things around. I'm a testimony. I'm a testimony. There is no time I have called unto my God. Even in the times of ignorance, once his name is measured there, he will interfere. The reason why you've called unto God and is not able to manifest, it's because you've called him and you want to subtend him into your understanding. Banange, God cannot be understood. I have studied God. I believe more than any man on this world. I've studied God in the dimension of flesh, the dimension of the undimensions, the dimension of time, and the dimension of outside time. But one thing I can tell you, the more you study God, is the more you will know that he's unstudied. Because he appears as he wills to appear. He can choose to be outside time, at the same time be in time. Because he's the God of all seasons. Yet the Bible says he dwells out of seasons. If we are to grow in faith, we ought to take God by his word. Tell your neighbor, take God by his word. Now, when brother Peter and John encounter this gentleman that was at the gate of beautiful, this guy had spent there 30 plus years. And everyone knew him as a crippled guy that would sit at the gate and ask for arms. Do you realize that even Jesus saw this guy and left him there? Because Jesus would always go to the temple and meaning they would find here. But all Peter had in his mind was that if this guy told us that we shall do mighty exploits, I want to look for something. Peter didn't have knowledge of the word. No one should lie to you. Actually, do you know why Peter writes his account later after the Gospels were already written? Do you know why he writes his account, the letters? Do you know why he writes the first and second Peter? He writes after he has been taught. It's when he writes. That's why his explanation, if you're to follow it up, it's in line with the explanation of Paul. Because now knowledge had been shed unto Peter. Are you seeing that? Now, the problem where the power has been robbed and faith has been played with. Faith is the greatest weapon that God has ever given to man. The biggest gift that God has given us is time. And the weapon there are in time is the weapon of faith. Show me a faithful man, a man full of faith, and I'll show you a man that is never disappointed. You are always disappointed because you don't have faith. Am I teaching well? Is somebody following? The problem with us today is that we are now obsessed with mysteries. Some people are not attending churches because they are looking for a deeper preacher. Man, that guy is not deep enough. I, I want a guy that is deep. But the guys that did miracles were never deep. They were never deep. If you can get me any teaching of Bishop Idahosa that is deeper than mine, I'll pay you. <laughs> but bring the wax. I might hide away. Because their dead bodies have run away from. But did he ever run away from a dead body? There is a dead body they called me to rise. 
and I found the intestines out. I'm telling I couldn't say any prayer. I just said that one God has called him. It's okay. It's well. May God comfort you. I'm telling you the truth. I, Apostle David, I reached, I saw intestines out. I'm like, Rika Toko Bayade. Immediately. Hey, you people, when we talk of doing stranger things in God, you don't know what has tested us. You see, when the devil knows that you are given a gift of healing, he will afflict you with things that will cause you to doubt what is upon you. Through knowledge. Through knowledge. As God is using knowledge to vindicate us, the devil is also using knowledge to divert us. Because as men are supposed to invest time in seeking God to vindicate their faith, men are now seeking God to do what? To grow their knowledge. Someone feels like as people are seeking God, you see, our fathers were seeking God for a move. For us, we are seeking God for a deeper message. Give me that message that will change this world. Give me that message. Message! You get the message, you come. God is not God. God is God. It's, it's deep. Come on, it's deep. You, you can't understand that. You see, you people think that these things of faith are in English. No, let me tell you. Peter even... Uh, this Peter I'm talking about reaches a guy and all he had, not even a gold coin, not even a silver coin. He had nothing. Not even English. But all he had was Christ in him. He knew that the Holy Ghost dwelt in him to do what? To make him a witness of the power that is in the inside of his bonsum. That's why when he comes, he doesn't come as one that knows English, as one that knows scriptures. He doesn't come as one that comes to encourage. He doesn't come as one. He comes with one that has authority from above to witness that which Christ did. He tells him, okay, okay, I don't have what you want, but I have what can make you better. Raise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Omuita konga tamulabi. As you're preaching the gospel, you say lame guy, you run away from there. God can make the lame walk. God can make the blind see. Nachivobo street is full of the sick. Why is it that the men of God that are doing miracles, don't they see the Nachivobo people? <laughs> I'm not questioning anyone. Don't they? Don't they? Including me. Don't we see them? <laughs> Why don't we go and evade there? Those babies with big heads like this. <laughs> you slap the head and the head gets back to position. Because money you don't have. <laughs> but you have something in your hands. That once it touches a tumor. Come on. <laughs> you, you people don't know. Smith Wigglesworth. They brought a guy with cancer like this. Cancer on the cheek. Comes, looks at it. The, he slaps the cancer off. But look at you. They bring someone with a wound. You believe, okay, I've given you three days. Sayeth the Lord. And, and tongues have spoiled you people. You even speak them where they are not necessary. You don't know that they are for self-edification. <laughs> so I don't know why you're edifying yourself as you're praying for the sick. What were you doing before? We never see any account of someone performing a miracle as they ra -ba 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 No. Edify yourself and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And as you appear, you are already edified to execute the purpose of God. May God raise somebody from this congregation today to go mad for him. To go mad for him. Katiwano, the story of the apostles had changed. 
These were not the gluttons they spoke about, Pastor Elijah. No, 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 no. These were no longer the boys they said that, oh, Jesus walks with boys that are short-tempered. No. No, these ones were mad. That when they told Peter, we are arresting you for the gospel, he said, Amir, take me. He didn't accept because he wanted to die. He accepted because he knew that the chains would fall off and would be set free. Because he had accepted a God that calls the things that be not as though they were. He knew that no chain would hold him captive. When Jesus chose, or if Jesus chose not to die, come on, no one would take his life. Because they would kill him, he rises himself up again and tells them, come on, bring it again. They shoot. He goes down. He comes, ha, 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 I'm still alive. Th that's what would happen. But the Bible says he gave up. Men of faith are not victims of circumstances. We are not culprits. Refuse to be a culprit. You a builder. You an establisher. Of the things of God. We are custodians of these things. But we are being wiped away from the place. It's my prayer that may God restore us to the place of power. The place where you walk and men know that God has passed somewhere. You were minister, but you have to first introduce yourself. You see now, I am an apostle of Jesus Christ. They tell you what shows you are an apostle. You see, I have a YouTube channel. We have over 1,000 followers. You see, I have a following of over, over 300 plus 1K people tune in to my messages every time I'm live. You see, I have a Facebook. It is in over 10K people following. Uh, I, I worship at Naguru. I, I, I make big gatherings and, and the entire world knows about me. That's Apostle David. No, 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 no. There are times where men were introduced by the Holy Ghost because they were hosts of the Holy Ghost. Those are the men that carry the faith of God. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17, the Bible says, by faith Abraham was tired, was tried. He says, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten, Son, the Bible says, of whom it was said that Isaac shall thy seed be called. There is something you don't know that happened. Why Abraham had the confidence. Listen to what brother Paul or Timothy writes and says. He says, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. From whence also he received him in a figure. What made Abraham confident to take the boy to the altar was faith. Because the promise had come to him. The promise came to Abraham. And God told him, I will multiply your seed through Isaac. That's all he needed. All he knew. Isaac could not die until the seed is multiplied. Whether he takes him to the altar, slaughters off his head, he had confidence that even if the head of Isaac went, God had the capability to raise him back from the dead because his promise was that a seed would be multiplied in him. Sometimes believing the promises of God, irrespective of what comes on the way, the end is what he communicated before because he's a God that requires that which dwelt in the past. He keeps his word. He keeps his word. Now look at you. You've already taken your first seed somewhere. Your Isaac, it's how you're calling it. I've brought my Isaac to the altar. But you've taken your Isaac like 10 times to the altar. You've never received your Isaac back. 
no communication. That can't be God. That can't be God. God promised you to be healthy. Come on, let me tell you. Let me give you examples. You see, whatever the devil may do is to fight you to unbelief. But not to take you out of your victory. When God said you will be a victor, you will be a victor. Whether you believe or doubt. Because he will watch his word to bring it unto accomplishment. The devil may fight all these first steps and battles. But he can never fight against your victory. He's just, he just wants to awaken unbelief in you. You see, if Abraham had forgotten the promise of God, that it wasn't in his means that Isaac was produced. The guy is in later hundreds. But he was able to conceive. And God has promised you that your womb shall bear children. Why are you barren? And you've also admitted, Even when they say, if you're barren, receive your seed. You also touch your body. I'm barren. I receive my seed. Sometimes, there are prayers you're not supposed to. You believe you are healed. As they are praying for unbelievers, if you have cancer in your body, you raise up your hands. I have cancer. Oh God, I have cancer. Take the cancer. Ay, 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 ay. You're moving away from the promise. Sometimes you just need to face the cancer and tell it whether you come or you don't. Whether you leave or you don't, my body does not contain sickness. And that's all. Because your strength is not in the outcome. It's not in the journey through which God will prove himself that he's God. But it's from the very first place he proved himself that he was God by speaking unto you. When God tells you you will drive. Even if you find a car. And they split water on you. Your word is that you will drive. Even if someone brings a bicycle, don't refuse the bicycle. Maybe it's trying to give you stability on the way. But how many of us can watch the word of God to fulfillment? Do you know how many promises that God has given unto you? But you've never seen any come to pass. Because you don't have faith. My dear friends, my dear sons, faith is choosing not to know, but to know God. It's when you deliberately choose and say, I don't need to know anything. I just need to silence everything that is communicating and listen to the voice of God. Faith, no matter how contradictory the voice of the Lord may be unto you, choose the voice of the Lord. Abraham could not understand it. He couldn't. The guy that told me this and that and that and that and that. Little did he know that the end of that, that the sacrifice of Isaac was taken by God. How many of you believe that Isaac was taken by God that day? Wave to me, Bible readers. Eh -eh. <laughs> Glory. Pastor Elijah is the only one believing with me. So let me open the eyes of the rest. The altar did not take the lamp that was given unto Abraham by God. It took Isaac. The lamp was just a representation of Isaac. That's why God had to return the same Isaac.
as the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaac comes from a barren womb. That is the representation of the resurrection of Christ. That he would come out of the dead. So all these were communicating a pattern. But only a man that has understood that faith is for the crazy, things that don't add up are what make up faith, are the ones who can walk in it. Faith is when you are able to get into that bond and tell them I'm tired of walking by foot. And I'm living with my car. Where is money? I don't. You're buying it for me. I told you people a story and let me tell you again. I have a friend called Prophet Josiah. That guy went there at the police station and told the friend he was with and told him, there is a policeman here that has our transport to Guru. And I have to enter there and tell him to give it to us. The guy enters the police in Chengara and tells the policeman, you have our transport to Gulu, 50,000. Please give it to me. I want to go. Quickly. The policeman touches the pocket, removes the 50,000. The guy tells him, God bless you. He moves out. But you, God, can tell you that this is your time and this is your season. Go, stand, to, stand at the road and wait for the man that is coming and will bless you. Some of you are too impatient to operate in faith. Faith is for the patient. You go to the road, you stand. The first man passes. Second man. Some of you, God has already given you a car, but you've deliberately refused it. You have your neighbor's car there, and God has told you it's yours. Can I get to the Go to the neighbor and tell them, give me my keys. You're taking my position. Tell them I want to drive. I have to go. I have to go somewhere. You have my car. You have to be mad. Some people have your money and you're just there. Reach out to them and tell them you have 10 million of mine on your account. I want to start a business. Bring it on. Faith. You have somebody's eyes, but look at you. What if I lay hands and a blind goes more blind? Ah. Ah. Let me tell you, the moment you feel ashamed of manifesting God, it means the glory is not unto God, it's unto you. If you cannot take on the shame for the Lord, it means you're taking the glory for him. How will they see me? Some of even preaching on the street, you're not that beautiful, you're not that handsome, you're not even rich, but even standing on the pulpit and saying, hallelujah, Jesus is, how will they see me? Who will see you? Who knows you? Who? Who? Actually, God is trying to put you somewhere so that people can notice you. That's why some of you are still single at the age of 30, 32, 35 because you failed to go and stand on the street and your man will locate you as a preacher. And then, And then, some of you, your men are supposed to find in Serena. Where are you eating food? Your guy sits at Serena every day waiting for you. How can I eat from there? I can't. That's expensive. Faith makes you run mad. Go without any single coin. The Bible says without money, come and order food. When you see your faith is about to disappoint, you apply knowledge. Look for someone that is seated alone. Make a conversation. After tell him, I, I, I feel, but be, be led by the spirit. 
you might say, let me pay. And then you, you want to bring it on. Ah, let me pay. The person will tell you, okay, let, nah, we. you're my new friend. Let me pay for you. No. I can finish this. Are you seeing how someone will say, okay, finish it? So you should not insist. When you say, let me pay, and the person says, let me pay, say, that's kind of you. That's kind of you. My God, God bless you. But you know that had the person said, you pay, only the heavens would witness what would happen to you. Because all the networks of the banks would fail. You see now, my network is down. It's just working. I will compensate. But what will you compensate that you have? <laughs> so, by faith, we need to understand that the promises of God will always be established on a solid rock. And you will watch them to come to pass. We need not to share the glory of God. What, what, what knowledge and what the new move of the church today is doing, it's teaching you to share the glory of God. That's why you are ashamed to pray for the sick. Because you feel when the sick person won't walk, you'll be ashamed. It means the glory is not, is not for God, it's for you. But when the glory is of God, whether he walks or he doesn't, you've prayed. You've done your, your part. So if he doesn't walk, it's God to be ashamed. And God can never ashamed his name and his word. He will always be there to watch it out. The reason why God is not working because he is not the one that is taking the glory. You've already taken the glory of God. Look at you. Jesus Christ seated on earth. Some of you, 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 you want to go to church and you want that front seat. Once they don't give it to you, do they know what they hosted? What? What? Not even a piece of clay, but you yourself, which is the one we hosted. They're nothing. Because if you're something, you, <laughs> you would cause an impact. Time should come where you attend service. And power is emitted from where you're seated. May God place a certain mark on you that your faith is stirred. That when you sit in a taxi, men with demon spirits, but you sit next to a woman, she's coming from a shrine full of, full of evil spirits. Legion of demons on the lady. She even knocks on you and nothing changes. Ay, ay, ay. I've seen men of God visit and meet Mama Fina. And the lady stays the same. Nothing comes off and says, Ah, ah, we want to get born again. Please, please, don't send us to fire. Actually, Mama Fina becomes more powerful because he goes with the stars of the men of God and they live with the bags of money. It's okay to take money from the heathen, but you, 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 is it okay with you? So, <laughs> some men of God, let me tell you, some of you think that because you have big numbers, your principalities, but you're some of the weakest ministers that are living on this world. Do you know that there even might be one that is inside here and you're even more of power and of dominion than I am when you're seated here? Do you know it's possible? When the spirit world realizes or recognizes you as a higher rank, ranks are not given according to the numbers you sit or according to how, how you can preach good. No, 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 no. These are given according to the sacrifices. These are given according to the knowledge of faith that you carry in God. The level of faith you carry gives you a ranking in the spirit world. You look at a man of God, 
very happy, bringing Muslims on the altar. They are even taking salamu alaikum on the altar. And that congregation, And you tell me that, don't you have a problem? And that's in the church. Power should be drawn. The church should carry a distinction. See, baby, don't ya te a te a te a te ne da. E kani se gambie ne da. Kumango kukiriza kwa fetu kuzude mu Christo Yesu. Where is our faith? Where is our faith? The Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 17, there is a beautiful conversation. That happens when there is a demon spirit. Oh, my time is done, but I'm borrowing some few minutes from you. I'm about to conclude. He says, then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? He says, and Jesus said unto them, because your unbelief. Because your unbelief. He says, for I say unto you. He didn't say because of your lack of knowledge, but because of your lack of faith. Sometimes it's better not to seek knowledge and just seek faith. Because that's when things will be not adding up, but they will be manifesting. Then things adding up and they are not manifesting. I see a certain man of God trying to explain how visions are, are created. And now I'm like, now you see, look at this one. The next thing I had the man prophesying was a lady that came in church without putting on a nick. So by the time you're creating even understanding, for you all you're looking for is a lady that is looking around naked. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. Does he say that angels will come from heaven and remove it? Does he say that I, God, will remove the mountain? Does he say that, okay, okay, the devil that placed the mountain will move it away? Does he say that? No, he says the mountain will move itself to the yonder place. Meaning that faith gives your word power to be vibrant as the word of God. That's why the Bible continues and says, mountain to remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Tell your neighbor, nothing shall be impossible unto you. Tell your neighbor, I want you to look at that impossible thing. Today, I just want to deal with one thing in your life. And you will thank me tomorrow. I want you to look at that very impossible thing that you're thinking of. Carry it in, more in your mind. As we are finishing this service, it's what I'm going to deal with today. And just to show you that there is nothing impossible for God. Even if you want to sleep in the U.S. tonight, you can sleep there. Without a visa, without an air ticket. How will, if Jonah could find himself in Nineveh by a fish, at least a fish will swallow you and you find yourself in the U.S. I'm telling you, if you want to wake up and you have a mansion that is constructed, I don't know how it will be. But you might sleep. And wake up in a house you didn't build. 
Because it says you will be in places you never owned. Nothing is impossible with our God. Nothing is impossible with our God. Who is that one that thinks that they are great? We can put them down in a minute. Because nothing is impossible with our God. What did your enemy say that you won't do? You will do it and ten times more. Because nothing is impossible with our God. What have you chosen to believe? Is it to go with unbelief? And what shall it profit you? You see, it takes nothing to believe. As it takes nothing to unbelieve. But there is a repercussion for both. You might either rejoice or cry. I don't want to deal with people that are looking for cars in the congregation. I want to deal with people that want to leave this place as they are looking for dead bodies. I want to preach to a man that wants to live here and you won't sleep tonight until you've seen a lame guy walk. I want to talk to someone that will live here and you want to see a shrine catch fire as you're just looking at it. I want someone that will cast out a demon. Who is going home by a taxi as you're living here? Come on, just swala, swaza. Anyone going home by a taxi? I, I just want the Spirit of God to help you. That as you sit in that taxi, a power will be eradicated off you. And demons will know that there is a power that is here. Those are the men we want. Men that are going to enter a marketplace. And witches will start to hide. But gone are the days where power was power in the church because the church had faith. Today we are full of motivation. Banangem, I'm not here to motivate you. If you feel you came here for me to talk to you, that you, see, manya, you will make it no matter what. I won't tell it to you. I am here to make you know of who you are in God. The power that you carry in the inside of you. I, I don't care whether you, you, you see my depressed. Take your depression on the other side and understand who you are. You see, me when I went to church, they didn't tell me things will be okay. They won't be okay until you get faith. They won't. I won't lie to you. You see, Apostle Davin is, is this guy that is rough. and no, 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 I'm rough. And as I'm concluding, get to your feet. I have allowed you today, you can play. Let me open your eyes to this. Do you realize that the enemy can push you away from the place of prayer because prayer is the jet and the generator of your faith? What boosts the confidence of a man is what happens in their closet. Some of you are being separated from prayer. And as you're listening to me now, God is inviting you back to that place. It's not by mistake you're listening to me. He is inviting you back to that place. I know some of you have the Holy Spirit as you claim. But you can't have the Holy Spirit and don't have power or faith in you. Because the Holy Ghost comes that you may have power. Today I don't want to pray so much. I just want to pray for those that the Holy Ghost will embody with power tonight. 
enough of powerless ministers. Enough of powerless and faithless churches. Didn't he say in his word that he will make one a thousand? Didn't he say that? He says and a thousand a what? Didn't he promise it in his word? I believe each one of you can be a pot of power in this place. I don't know how many we are, but imagine if all these portals are eradicated with power, what would happen today? Lift up your voice and speak to God. Tell him to stir up your faith. Sagala we mole njagalo sabe video. As one that is tired. As one that wants something to raise from them. Pray until you feel like you are just roaring like a lion. Pray until you feel you can't stand. But just to kneel down and ra -da 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 -da. Come on. Pray like a hungry generation. That is seeking out. To see God again. Come on. There are those of you that God had entrusted with power. And maybe somewhere, somehow you dropped back. You're the one I came for tonight. Come on. I want to hear you pray. I want to hear this room flooded in prayer. Even on the camera, leave the camera alone. Bless in wide and pray. He says the time is coming. And now is the time. <laughs> hey! I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Come on. Come on. I am telling you that you are not going to be a day. Tell him, God, ignite my faith. Tell him, God, ignite my spirit to stand against principalities, to stand against powers. Tell him, ignite my faith to stand against altars of darkness. Tell him, ignite, ignite, ignite as a voice unto my generation. Come on, come on. I want to hear this house flooded. Come on. Come on. There is a reason why you came. Don't be silent. Tell him, send me on fire. Tell him, send me on fire. What you will say, I will do. What you will make me, I will become. Come on. Come on. Hold your belly. He promised that streams of living water shall flow out of you. Come on. 
You can pray better than that. When you know what you're desiring, when you know what you're asking for, you can get more mad. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Don't mind your neighbor that is still not praying. You are saying they will know. You are saying for them they don't know what you're looking for. You know what you want. You know what you want. Pray. Pray. Like your next life depended on that prayer. Pray. Pray until you feel the tongues of fire on your head. We shall function in the faith of the Lord. We shall see the lame walk again. We shall, come on. Come on. We shall see the dead rise again. We shall see the blind eyes open again. We shall see fire fall again. I tell it here. Come on. Come on. Come on. I tell it here, Bosa. In la kaya bayatea. Ratatatadaba. We shall see God again. We shall see God again. We shall see God again. I Come on. You know what you want. Fire is in this room. Fire is in this room. For everyone. For everyone. Fire. 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 Light up again. Fire. Light our faith again. Elakaya. Fire. Again. 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 Kapaya da 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 da. Don't get tired. We are reaching there. Men shall notice you. Come on, pray. 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 Faith. Fire shall visit you again. Fire shall visit you again. Take the fire. Kepaya de rebosa. Latalande de ba. Take the fire. Take the fire. Kepala de. Ratatateleba. Rakando sevelede. It will be your way. It will be your way. Kepala de. Latalando sebe. Take the fire. Take the fire. Come on. Come on. Come on. You will take the fire. You will take the fire. You will take the fire. And you will be set up on fire. Receive it. Receive it. Elatayadeza. Rabababababakosa. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Ayateleba. Ratazeteleba. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Ayatelebosa. Payatatata. Ragatelede. Esa koboyoda. You will burn again. You will burn again. Fire. 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 F
faith will be reignited. Fire is shut on your altar. Sight is restored. Come on. Come on. Take the fire. Kapaya de Lebosa. Take it. Aya tele lebosa yalaba. Reda de lebosa. Eya kabaya de la. Esa koyando sifayando sa. Your faith will be faith. Ela tayado bosa. Rando sifayando sa. La payando zila. Enda kovayando seke teleba. La ta 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 ba. Reka segere ya. Reba zata yalaba. Rata. Elatea. Imanto zasap. Hey. Fire is in this room. Cyrus, you come. Come. Shatayala bayela. Fire. Gentlemen, come also. Come. Do you want the fire? Raise up your hands. Come on, don't be silent. Shatala bayando sebelede. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. Father, that time is here. Time is here for you to mantle your vessels. Shetele baya la deza. Rato legele bosa. Manto your vessel. Manto your vessel. Manto your vessel. La talere bosa. That's the fire of God. From the carnivorous soles of your feet. Manto. With fire. Le kaya bayendi. La to robo sheketele baya. Receive the Holy Ghost. 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 Receive. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive. Receive. Father, fill him with the Holy Ghost. Fill him with the Holy Ghost. That's the Spirit of God. Fill him with the Holy Ghost. Shetele baya. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost from the carnival soles of your feet. Power flow. Power flow. Power flow. Shetele baya. Latalando sekeleba. He says he will stir everything in you. Lakayalebosa. That's the stirring of the Holy Ghost. The waters are stirred. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. 
Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Hila tayala baya. Hebele de bosa. Haya paladeha. Cobranda sicalando se veledesa. As long as I am living, <laughs> I will raise worship you. Mr. Driss, come. This is yours. Come. And I just raise up your hands from there. No one be silent. And I will always <laughs> worship you. As long as I am breathing. And I I don't know whether you can contain it because it's even bigger, way older than this world. But the Spirit of the Lord has told me that your time to manifest has come. God is going to give you a strange healing anointing. It's going to be a triple of the anointing of healing that I carry. He has told me that you have sought for that and is releasing it unto you. coming That's it. That's it. Ela Delia. That's it. Hey, hey. la la ba solo bossa. Most cases, people don't know what they ask for until they receive it. Hey, <laughs> That's it. That's it. Hey, <laughs> hey. Hey, hey. 
daddy. People will never understand what they ask for until they receive it. <laughs> I need someone to help me here. Come. <laughs> you just don't know what you ask for. Power! When you ask for power, you get power. When you ask for glory, you get glory. When you ask for anointing, anointing is given. He says, whatsoever you ask, he shall give. <laughs> Receive it. Receive it. I need some help here. <laughs> get me a microphone. Hurry up, get me a microphone. When we tell you stranger days of power coming, where men shall be mantled with fire, etaladea. When we tell you stranger days, Ediga, you come. We are getting to clouds. Getting to clouds. <laughs> clouds that are going to separate men. With powers we've never seen. Custodians of systems. Just take what is yours and leave what does not belong to you. Receive it. Receive it. Men that will be mantled in powers. That will be stranger. That is the overflow. Hey. That is it. That is it flowing. Feeling Holy Ghost. Make him drunk. Kabaya delebo seneleba, rada de 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 bosa, make him drunk with the Holy Ghost. Kabaya la 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 baso toloboya, enda la bayando sebelede, make him drunk. Isa da 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 de la, eba enda la da 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 da, isa kabaya deleba, make him drunk. This is of a stranger nation. The wind bloweth wide. The wind blows where at least. Leave it. The wind blows where at least. There are some of you that will never be the same again because of this service. If you've never received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, 
I want to give you an opportunity. Just say, dear Lord Jesus, today I believe with my heart, confess with my lips that you died and rose again, that I may be alive in you and you in me. From today, I am born again. In Jesus' name.